clumsy, what is a double negative, then we're going to look at how to avoid both of those circumstances, and we're going to end, as always, with some practice. All right, what makes a sentence clumsy? Well, remember, English borrows words from a lot of different languages, and because it borrows words from so many languages, it includes a tremendous variety of sounds. And so readers and listeners prize language that sounds good. Some sentences do not sound good. Here's how to avoid the bad sounding ones. Most clumsy sentences, if they don't contain actual grammatical errors, include words that they don't need, or they are written in the passive voice when the active voice would work better. These sentences are perfectly grammatically correct, they're just clunky. So let's look at them. All right, what is a double negative? This is a particular kind of grammatical error that many people use anyway, and it makes your sentences clunk. Many languages use pairs of negative words for emphasis. English is not one of those languages. In English, two negative words or parts of words, such as not, no, un, and so on, make a positive, and they do it in a clunky way. Sometimes they're flat out wrong. So, for example, it's a double negative to say, I didn't do nothing. Literally, in English grammar, that means I did do something. But of course, anybody who says, I didn't do nothing, is actually trying to tell you, I didn't do anything, I have committed no crime, I have offended you in no way, I have done nothing wrong. But instead, what comes out is, I didn't do nothing, and it sounds like I did do something, and it also makes the person saying it sound like an idiot. It is better to say, I did nothing, or I didn't do anything. Similarly, it's clumsy, and a double negative, to say he's not an unkind man. Well, that implies that he is a kind man, but it's better to come out and just say, he is a kind man. Much better. All right, so here's how to avoid clumsy sentences. First thing to do, use the active voice whenever possible. A sentence in the active voice is one in which the subject of the verb is performing the action the sentence describes. So, for example, this is the passive voice. The floor was scrubbed. The subject is floor, the verb is was scrubbed, but the floor isn't doing the scrubbing, it's receiving the scrubbing. So, it's in the passive voice. To write it in the active voice, you need something more like Melanie, subject, scrubbed, verb, the floor. Well, now we know who's doing the scrubbing. It's in the active voice, it's much clearer and more interesting. Fun tip, if you can end the sentence or the verb phrase with the phrase, buy zombies and have it make sense, your sentence is in the passive voice. So, the floor was scrubbed. By zombies. Or as Melanie scrubbed the floor by zombies. Doesn't actually make any sense and people will just look at you funny. So you know that that second sentence is in the active voice. Don't let the zombies in. Use the active voice. All right. Also, if you want to avoid clumsy sentences, avoid overusing there is, there are, it is, it was, and so on. Usually these phrases are just filler. Unless you're talking about something very specific like a geographic location or a few idiomatic uses, you very often don't need those phrases. So, it's clumsy to say, there is a hotel near my house that was voted the best hotel in the state. Okay, that was kind of long and much longer than it needed to be. It's not bad to say, the hotel near my house was voted best in the state, although that was voted is still in the passive voice. It's even better to say, I live near the best hotel in the state. Well, now we got lots of energy in that sentence. Now, let's look at another example. It is important to cook chicken thoroughly before eating it. True, very true, but clunky. It's not bad to say, cooking chicken before, thoroughly before eating it is important. Okay, now we've got our subject right up front. We know what the sentence is about, but it's best. It's even better to say, you should cook chicken thoroughly before you eat it. Oh, now you've got the listener involved. You should cook chicken thoroughly before you eat it. Now people are listening. All right, let's do a little practice with this. Rewrite each of these sentences to make it less clumsy and to avoid any double negatives. There may be several options. Choose the best one. All right, there is a large boulder that is located three miles north of town, and that is where you should turn left. The ball was hit out of the park by the batter. Your problem is that you don't ever do nothing. There are some changes that must be made to your design. And Sally wouldn't harm nobody. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. And here we go. It's much better to say, turn left at the large boulder three miles north of town. 
That gets rid of all the that is, there are, and it puts it in the imperative, gives someone an instruction, gets the listener involved. It's much better to say the batter hit the ball out of the park than it is to say the ball was hit out of the park. And it's better still to say to identify the player, the person who was hitting the ball. So it's better still to say Jackie Robinson hit the ball out of the park. Now we've got it narrowed down to one specific baseball player and we're in much better shape. Okay, it's better to say your problem is that you never do anything instead of never do nothing. You do never do no anything. That gets rid of your double negative. Or your problem is that you do nothing. Once again, we've gotten rid of that double negative and replaced it with a single, so it's much clearer and doesn't make you sound stupid. Uh, better than there are some changes that must be made to your design. Some changes must be made. That gets rid of the there are. It's better to say, please make some changes to your design. Once again, you're getting the listener involved by making that sentence a suggestion, a command. Sally wouldn't harm anyone gets rid of the double negative, as does Sally, uh, Sally would never harm anybody. So whether you're using not or never, you've got a single negative replacing the double. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.